we are Indian at a burial room. mounds are part of colloquial history. history. You hear about them all the time. Burial this site. is a real one. This when is I say burial mound of the Stockbridge tribe, really known as the Housatonics, a tribelet of the Mohican. Let's go for a walk and see what we can see. This is the ancient lichen covered obelisk marking the burial site of the Stockbridge Indians put up in 1877 by some friendly American sorts who had known the Stockbridge before they went west Stockbridge to west a branch of the Mohican. Real name, the Housatonic, our river being named after them. They were given the name Stockbridge when this area was given a charter by the state of Massachusetts so an Indian school could be built here so these native people could be taught to farm and to live like the superior they English did. for a time. In fact, they served valiantly in the American Revolution. The Stockbridge Indians were the terror of the Tories and the Indians of upstate New York and it wasn't until the disaster at Brooklyn where they're known the Stockbridge before they went west to western New York where the Finger Lakes are and then later to Wisconsin. On this site we would have seen the scaffolds that the Mohican people used to bury their dead. They buried their dead in the sky until the birds carried the flesh away to Gitche Manitou. And after that, they would put small erections of stone in the ground where they would enclose the bones of their honored dead. Typically, native people in this part of the Northeast wanted to face their cemeteries to the southeast or southwest. So it is sensible that we would see a cemetery in this exact location. But I would think we might also see graves on the other side of that fence there, which is interesting in itself. But all around this part of Stockbridge, the Housatonic River flows, it moves, it meanders, and there are several hills that would have housed fortifications stockades the native people built to maintain security as they are a tribe of people living on the edge of destruction with the Mohawk just a few miles to the north and west. So here we are in Stockbridge known for a lot of things today not for its Amerindian connection and that's what we're trying to change. The beating heart of the Berkshires, that's right. Stockbridge, Massachusetts, and right here, tucked on its corner, is the Red Lion Inn. Right, there they are. The hoity-toities, the New Yorkers. They're over there on the inn uh, porch enjoying a mint julep or something, some such drink. But the Red Lion Inn, is uh, the beating heart of it. We got Tanglewood just down the road and Jacob's Pillow up the road and Norman Rockwell's house and Edith Wharton's house and Daniel Fresh, Chester French's house and studio. It's all right here. And now I'm pulling into the Housatonic Rivers public launch. Really not that much of a public launch here. And uh, we're scoping it out. And uh, there's a basketball court and there's a boat launch over here. So I'm going to go over there and check it out with Officer Price. See what it, what's what. Oh, we could, we could have brought our board. A little skateboard park action. Officer Price, a famous poser from way back. In those middle school days, Tom, you used to wear those baggy shorts and those funny hats. Remember? <laughs> You're known to carve it up in Westside even today. We leave now, the kayaks tucked in. We make the run and come whipping back. And leave my truck down there. Or the second option being we 
put the kayak on your vehicle or throw your, your kayak in my vehicle and do it that way. Oh, look at the size of that snapping turtle, Tommy. Big old snapper sitting on the sandbar right there. Been out on his it. gravel bank. Mr. Snapping Turtle. He doesn't look like he wants any part of me. But that's a right to the right. Beautiful example of cutting edge of a river. See the erosion on that riverside, and on the left, the deposition side. So the, the right side here is going to be much deeper than the left side. So knowing that, I'm peppering these maple root roots that are sticking out into the water, thinking there's somebody under there looking for a quick meal, a lazy bass, maybe. I'll flip another one over there. We're working the spinnerbait. I think, oh, I just missed one, Tom. He had one bang it right there. Right where I thought, too, like there was like a little bit of soft water, and I threw it into the soft water, and it was like an, a reaction strike. So he gave it a, he gave it a go. Look at that house, Tom. Now, if I got that house or you got that house, we got a dock or something. You know, you'd have a, a dock that you could lower down in the summer, you know, yep. instead of just letting the river. I mean, that river's eroding right into their property. They got it. I don't really think they can do much about it. This river, if you look at it on Google Earth, has got all kinds of meanders. It snakes back and forth across this beautiful valley, and you can see the topsoil that it's deposited over hundreds and thousands of years, making it extremely fertile. So this is what brought the Amerindians here. And remember, the Amerindians, pre-contact, were generally a, uh, what you call riverine people. They related to the rivers for the fish and for the fertility of the soil that surrounds them. So when you're thinking Amerindian and you're up in the Berkshires in the middle of the, the hills, oh, we got one, got something over here. Oh, it's a little small mouth. He's fighting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm the spinnerbait. Not a big small mouth, right? But he was game. Tom just bagged a pike where this stream enters the main river. And now we got some water up there that's got potential. I'm going to throw a deep cast after Tom here with the popper. Or I'm not because I'm in a total mess. Oh no, I'm out. Look at Tom firing his, firing his way up. He doesn't care. Oh yeah, he's got it. I'm going deep to his left. Oh, the wind got me. I got the bluefish popper on. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah, it, it, it's surprising. We have to remember that, right? Because these little estuaries that come into it are deep. Well, that's where we got the, the walleye when Scott and I did that Canadian River trip. Yeah. There was a couple little streams that came in like this and we started fishing. Up so, there. That's where they were. yeah, so it's like, uh, it's different water quality. You know, it's something different. Yeah. And probably it's got lots of minnows relating to it, too. like a tunnel. We're coming through a tunnel. Hit the insides of the bends where there's, there's uh, slack water. He was sitting right inside of a bend. You know, he he was not out in the main current. He was like doing what a trout would do. It's a nice river fish, huh? That's where you want to be, right in there.
Oh. He stopped it dead, too. He, it wasn't like one of the little guys just yeah. tapping it, you know. Because the, the, uh, the Tonics and the Mohicans were friendly. They had sided with the English for a long time. So they figured they would teach them to be little Englishmen and assimilate them. Within, uh, you know, 50 years, the Stockbridge Indians were gone. But that's what they did. They changed their name because they became, not all of them, but many of them became Christian. They started calling them the Stockbridge Indians. Not the Housatonics anymore, the Potatucks. And uh, they worked as rangers in the wars, in the French and Indian Wars, and also in uh, the Revolution. They served as rangers. And they were supposedly excellent, as you can imagine, they would be, because of their woodcraft and all that. They were excellent scouts and that kind of thing. But they were sent out to uh, raid Brooklyn, New York, when the British were down there in 1778. And believe it or not, they got ambushed by British rangers. And the chief and his father were both killed there, along with 15 of their men. Now, he wasn't the last of the Mohicans by any means, but when the Revolutionary War ended, they moved to uh, western New York. Price hooks up. We don't know how big this thing is. And he's using the classic jerk bait, so that's a bigger fish, it looks like. I can't get my net. <laughs> nice. Let me get over there. The pike man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh! He's attacking my boy. He swallowed the lure. Oh, of course he did. He went for the eat. Oh, yeah. That's a... That's a pike that won't be down for breakfast, probably. Watch those hands. Yeah. Nice fish. Who's a tonic river pike, people? Nicely done. He's now Dr. Price is gonna operate. <laughs> he's uh, he's gonna hit it, but I haven't gotten one yet. The pike is eating those jerk baits. Here he goes, he's got the net out again. Oh! Officer Pike Price is making the net. Oh, this is a baby compared to the last one. Kidding. Pretty good. How about you? He's gotten some nice pike. Yeah, yeah, I got a pretty good size. Three pounds, smallmouth, two and a half. I uh, got one that was probably 25. He's got this tiny little jerk bait he's using. He's driving me crazy. He's got it all figured out. I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna what? That's hot. That there, yeah, right in there. Now, how are we gonna get at it? There's only one way over here. Okay. I'm on the surface, Tom. You'll be able to get them down deep. 
I've caught pike on this lure before. I actually thought about putting on the wappa plopa. Yeah, that's what I thought you had on before. Because that works, we, as we know. <laughs> it's just so obnoxious, they can't not hit it. I wonder how much further we got. I think it's right down here. Is that what that is? That's hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know this area that good. Like I, and like I told you, it's a maze. That's probably the Norman Rockwell Museum. That's Norman Rockwell's house. Americana, Tom. It's Norman Rockwell's house up there. Fishing historic places in the Berkshires up on the top of the hill. Norman Rockwell. There's one more street up here. And after that, there's nothing for another couple miles. Yeah, that's definitely it. Look at it. It's beautiful. Big gothic style house up on top of the hill. You see the lights? Yeah, that's it. That's why it's lit up like that. Tom, this is a perfect place for you to uh, launch your... Do you, you want to just paddle here. down or what? Yeah, I suppose it's all 8 o'clock. Yeah, I know. Son of a gun. No. This is my idea of quiet power. And so, after a nice five hour flow, Lindale Bridge here, watching a choo choo cross an unmarked crossing. There's no crossing arm that comes down, the choo choo just sounds the horn. But we're going to pull out right down here. It was a pretty good day. I caught a lot of fish, no pike, a couple, couple decent smallmouth. But this is a nice example of what you can do up here in the Berkshires beyond going out to dinner and checking out Norman Rockwell's house. You can get out and you can see the wild country. The Lusitonic makes a great float. Put in just below the Red Lion Inn and we're pulling out about a mile as you drive here at Glendale Dam. So check it out yourself sometime. Look very good. He's had better days. You want to know why? No, he got eaten by a pike. You can see this bass has literally been almost bitten in half by a pike. Look at that. <laughs>